In this next exercise, we're going to take a look at running the payment proposal function within X3. And again, the payment proposal is the utility that you can utilize to generate your check runs um, that you do, say, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. So to run the payment proposal, we're going to come under our APAR accounting function, then to payments, then into payment proposal. Up here at the top, we're going to go ahead and set the payment sign to expense. Specify the company that we want to run the function for. Down here in the date selection mode, we can set this either to due date, uh, which allows for us to specify the date range, the due date range over which we want to filter our liabilities. We can uh, set it to early discount or to both. Um, this both option can be utilized in cases whereby <clears throat> we have certain suppliers that grant us an early payment discount that we wish to have captured, um, as well as capturing those items that are just due to uh, um, that are due out um, on a terms basis. Um, another feature within here, if we run it with the both option, you see also in here we have an allowance days that we could set up. So that is to say, um, you know, if your supplier grants you an early, uh, say a 10-day discount period, but you wish to be able to take the discount maybe if you're out to the 12th day, you could go ahead and set the allowance days to two. Um, then that would also include those uh, discountable items up to the 12th day. Then in addition, we have this always discount method. So even if you are you know well past the discount period if you still wish to take that discount when you run your check run you could go ahead and set that always discount field okay um, in this case I'm gonna go ahead and just run it for a simple due date basis uh, method um, so in this case for your due date from you know you can either leave that blank or otherwise I recommend you know, go ahead and setting that from date far enough back that you know it encompasses all your past due activity. Your to date here represents your cutoff date, so in this case I wish to pay everything that's due through the end of January. Down here in our criteria section here, you can go ahead and leave your all transactions set. Um, if I'm doing a batch, say for a check run, I oftentimes like to deselect this all payment method and go ahead and choose the payment method here of check. You know, alternatively, I could do a subsequent um, payment proposal batch, maybe just for my wire transfers or for my cash payments um, by using this payment mode selectors. Um, in this case, I'm going to do it for all financial sites within this company. Under your all types of BPs, uh, people will commonly uncheck that. Then over here in your BP type, you can come over here to set this to supplier. Now, where this can be advantageous is from a couple different perspectives. Um, one, if you have your all types of BPs checked, um, that's going to include customer activity. So that is to say, if you have a customer for which there's a credit balance on their account, X3 is going to um, work under the assumption that you wish to issue them a reimbursement check, um, which for many companies isn't the case. So in this case, I'd recommend just go ahead and uncheck that and go ahead and set that to supplier. Okay. Down in your all BP section, we can go ahead and leave that set if we want to remit a payment to all business partners. Alternatively, in this case, I'm just going to run it for this one business partner that we've been demoing through. So I can go ahead and filter on that. Down under your all users here, if I want to go ahead and pay vouchers entered by all AP personnel who've entered them into the system. Okay. Down here in my control accounts section here, if I, if I had multiple... Um, AP control accounts, maybe a control account for my uh, domestic payables versus foreign payables, um, or my uh, standard trade payables versus my intercompany payables. I could come in here, for instance, and set a filter in accordance with that. 
we can filter uh, in accordance with the currencies that the invoice was input on. So maybe I just wanted to pay those invoices that were entered um, in on a US dollar basis. We can set that. Over here in the open items section, one common thing in this block is to come over and click on the prepayments. And by virtue of setting that field, um, if we have any purchase orders that have been entered into the system that are flagged to be prepaid, X3 will go ahead and include those purchase orders uh, in the workbench that pops up uh, for payment. Next over here on the generation tab, um, here in the amount section, um, we have certain uh, ceilings and floors that we can set. So for instance, if I didn't want to, um, you know, pay out, uh, you know, to any one supplier a check in excess of, say, um, $15,000, I could go ahead and set up a maximum item uh, like that. Um, the minimum payment... Um, you know, on the flip side of the coin, this is kind of a floor that we can set. So maybe if I owed a supplier less than $25, you know, don't go ahead and bother to cut a check. Just wait until you owe them more money. Then finally, here we have a total maximum that we could come in to specify, you know, a max ceiling on our check run. So if I know if I knew I didn't have any more than $100,000 to outlay, I could go ahead and set that accordingly. Okay. More often or not, I'll see folks just leave these fields blank, and in the payment workbench that pops up, they'll go ahead and flag uh, individual items to be paid versus not. Over here in the bank field, this is where we come to specify your disbursement bank, uh, you know, the bank account that should be uh, credited uh, when these checks go out. Okay. Your grouping section over here, um, again, more often or not, folks will leave uh, these boxes unchecked. Uh, where this may be of use to you is, um, for instance, if we have this box checked, uh, one item for payment, uh, that's going to result in issuing one payment record for each invoice that's been entered for the supplier. We have this option here, one payment per grouping of due dates. So that is to say, for a given supplier, if I had two invoices that were due on the 15th and one due on the 30th, uh, X3 would seek to issue out two payment records. Uh, this third option right here, uh, payment per control account. So again, going back to the idea, if I had multiple AP control accounts and I wish to split my payment records in accordance with those accounts, I could set that. Then this final setting down here, if I had more than one financial site, um, you know, on the company, I could go ahead and split my pay payments in accordance with each site. Down here in the lower left-hand corner in our payments block, you're going to set your financial site that you want the payments to be issued from. You have the date that's going to be assigned to the payments. Here in the miscellaneous section, this is where one comes to specify the ordering of the payment records that are going to be generated. The most common options here would be uh, sorted ascending by uh, supplier account number, which would be this business partner setting. Conversely, we could also sort ascending by the company name. Okay, so this would sort the payments alphanumerically by the trade name. Finally, in the, these settings right here, um, we have this control setting right here. So more often or not, you're going to want that control box to be set. And that's what's going to result in the payment proposal workbench popping up for us. Alternatively, I could come in here and run this in simulation mode. And this would serve just to generate a log file for me, showing me you know, all the liabilities that are going to be paid out upon. It won't actually generate the payments though. Okay. Then finally down here we have this select by default setting. And what this um, will result in is in the uh, payment proposal workbench that pops up, um, if you have this box checked when you run it, all the items are going to come in with a payment setting of yes. 
Um, alternatively, if you run the process with this box being unchecked, all your invoices are going to come in with the payment setting of no, then you'd have to flip it to yes for each item that you wish to pay. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just run it with this um, select by default turned on. Okay, so now let's come over and click on the OK button. Okay, so here is that proposal workbench that we have set up. So in this case, it's telling me here that I have one payment that's going to be issued out totaling a little over $600,000. Going to Craft Electronics, and here are all the invoices that are going to be paid out upon. So a couple things of note in here, for instance, if I had certain items that I didn't wish to pay, I could come over to the select uh, column and go ahead and flag them to no here. Okay. In addition to that, if I had certain items that I wanted to pay but maybe I didn't want to outlay the full amount, I could come into this amount field here. For instance, I could update this $75,000, make it $50,000. And that would go ahead and you know update my payment amount accordingly. Over here in my balance column, I see the amount that would be left outstanding on that. So once I have all those items uh, selected and updated, I can come over here and click on this report button. And that report button in part will generate for me a uh, payment proposal listing showing me all my items that are to be paid. Um, you have your internal voucher number here. You have the invoice date, the due date, uh, the amount of the payment, and you have a grand total down here at the bottom of the report. So many organizations will um, print this report and get um, management sign off prior to the um, batch actually being approved. Okay. And from here, if we're satisfied with everything that we see, we can come over here and click on the Create button. Okay. So in here, it looks like we have one credit memo um, out there that is currently being matched, so it kind of went ahead and excluded that from the run. Um, but these other items here, we can see here we have payment record 001 that was generated. Adjacent to it here, this is the respective batch number. Here's the date of your payment for Kraft Electronics. Here are the indiv uh, individual invoices that are being paid out. Okay, then down here at the bottom of the log, you have the grand total of the cash outlay. Okay, so that kind of brings us full circle through our uh, payment proposal process. Um, in our next lesson here, we're going to take a look at to how to actually print out the checks.